official Android 14 update is finally here for Pixel 4a 5G owners and up. Admittedly, there aren't any huge sweeping changes across the board, but we do have some small, meaningful upgrades that do push Android in the right direction. To keep things simple, I'm going to condense this update into categories for you. So first we'll talk about actual new features, then we'll hop over to accessibility features, and we'll end this video with UI changes that you should at least be aware of. Starting with new features, Google added a highly requested feature in the form of in-depth lock screen customization. Within the settings, there's actually a whole new lock screen customization framework where you can choose from a handful of custom clock faces. You can also change the color theme, the brightness, and clock size. Each clock face does have an always on display version too and nice transitional animations to match. In the future, we do expect Google will add more as time goes on and hopefully third party developers will get access to this framework in the future. On top of that, Google also introduced lock screen shortcuts in Android 14 as part of the customization overhaul. These sit to the left and right hand corners of your lock screen and can be triggered with a long press. Users can change the shortcuts in the settings to Google Wallet, a QR code scanner, flashlight, do not disturb, and many more. Just no access for third-party apps at this time, unlike Samsung does with One UI. But one of the most practical features is having Health Connect integrated directly into Android as opposed to being a separate download from the Play Store. For those that don't know, Health Connect is a Google-made platform where you can sync all of your health data from various stat tracking apps like Google Fit, Fitbit, Samsung Health, MyFitnessPal, Whoop, and more. This really benefits those that are actively using a tracker of some kind to collect data, like a Pixel Watch or a Fitbit, as it can now sync that information between multiple apps and should make Android much easier in that regard. With Android 14, we also got support for 10-bit HDR images, which should allow for a greater range of brightness, colors, and contrast on eligible devices. Google Photos will also support the format as well, so not only will you be able to capture HR photos, but you'll be able to view, download, edit, and share the content as well. So while this might not make a huge difference immediately, over time you should notice Ultra HDR content become more and more popular amongst all Android manufacturers. If you have a six digit pin or greater, you can now automatically unlock your phone, assuming you typed in the pin correctly, of course. So now you can bypass hitting that enter key if it's easier for you. And finally, in the theme section, there's a new monochromatic theming option that changes the system colors to grayscale if material you color themes are just too much. And that's pretty much it for real, dedicated features for the average user, but the accessibility focused area of Android also got some meaningful updates. For starters, Android 14 now has an option for flash notifications. You can turn this on in the accessibility options and when activated, your LED flash will go off when you get a notification. To take it a step further, you can also enable a screen flash option as well for that extra bit of attention. The magnifier and hearing aid sections got some minor improvements as well. For the magnifier, I just noticed it's more responsive and easier to navigate in general, and we get a new icon in the bottom right hand side for quick access to various controls. As for the hearing aid accessibility option, there is a new dedicated setup flow and an option to set a shortcut for quick access to hearing controls. Lastly, for accessibility, Android 14 introduced a new font size toggle in the notification shade. In my experience, a lot of people actually use a larger font size, but sometimes it messes with app compatibility, so it makes perfect sense to have a quick access toggle to make changes on the fly to the font. And if you made it this far, I assume you really care about the intricate details of Android, and this section should be perfect for you. Android 14 introduced a ton of minor UI changes all throughout the OS that only the most dedicated users would truly notice on first glance. For example, you should notice is new Material U shapes when entering a pin code. Material U color theming has been added everywhere in the OS as well, from the back gesture icon to the colored chip that appears when charging your device to the slightly refined toggles inside menus. Not to mention there's a new lava lamp style animation when you play music from the notification shade. The long press menu for apps has been altered to fit the Material U look and overall, there's a ton of little tweaks like this everywhere that won't change how Android works, but all come together for a cohesive tune-up to the look and feel. I do have some honorable mentions as well that don't necessarily fit into any category, but you should still know about them anyway. Newcomers to the Pixel series should notice a new gesture navigation tutorial in the settings. This should help anyone unfamiliar with the gestures get used to them rather quickly. There's now a separate slider for ring volume and notification volume as well, which is a nice 
quality of life change. And in the about phone section, you should notice a new line item for the year your device was manufactured in, which is just good information to have access to in general. So if you're new to Android 14, or if this is your first video checking out the changes, I hope this helps give you a good overview on what new features you can expect in the next major version of Android. If you've been following my Android 14 beta coverage, let me know what you think now that the stable version is finally released. Were you expecting more? Were there any features that were missing that you would have liked to see? Leave a comment and let me know, but in the meantime, guys, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.